And communication has to be both ways. And we've got to be listening to what it is that God is saying in our lives. I think one of the best illustrations of this is in the life of Jesus. Jesus, in his prayer life, is listening to what the Father has to say. If you'll, uh, if you'll take your Bibles once again and go to Hebrews chapter 5. This is not out of the Gospels, but this is later on as the writer of Hebrews is looking back and he's trying to take a look at, at the experience of Jesus in prayer and, and what it did for Jesus' life. Hebrews chapter 5. And he's talking here about Christ as our high priest. After his uh, resurrection and his ascension into heaven, Christ becomes our high priest. But then, referring back to his time on this earth, in verse 7, and verse 7 starts out in the middle of the sentence here, okay? So, we have to make a little connection here. But verse 7 says, Who, referring to Christ, who in the days of his flesh, that means when Jesus was on this earth, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. I was talking about Jesus on this earth, talking about his prayer life, and he is praying with even tears. And he is praying very serious prayers to God. Now this may be talking about Jesus' prayer life in general, but I think it almost specifically is dealing with a story of Jesus in prayer. Does anybody get that same kind of connection as, as me? What do you think this could be referring to in this experience that Jesus has in prayer? Is it possibly talking about or referring to the experience that Jesus has in the garden on the night before he's crucified? Right? There, there were, some, there, there were uh, some tears that were shed as Jesus was praying to his father that night, I'm sure. As he was going through this, this agony, this experience of knowing what was to come ahead. And Jesus is praying out there in the garden. Let's look at verse, verse, uh, verse 8 that follows verse 7. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. So it's talking about Jesus and this, and this prayer that he's making with, with cries and tears to God. And uh, it says here that he learns obedience. Now that's a strange idea that God himself learns obedience. But Jesus, as the Son of Man, is on this earth. And he's in the garden on that night when his friends can't even stay awake. And, and they're falling asleep. They're not, they're not paying any attention to this great struggle that he's going through, right? And he's crying out. And what is it that Jesus is praying in this time? You remember his prayer, don't you? What is it, what is it that Jesus is praying out there in the garden as, as he knows what's coming? What are those words in his prayer? Father, if possible, if at all possible, let this cup pass. I don't want to go through that. I don't, Jesus, as truly man, said, I don't want to experience that. I don't want to go through that rejection. I don't want to go through that uh, suffering. I don't want to go through that death. Jesus said, Father, if possible, let the cup pass. What did the Father say? The Father said, Son, you need to drink from the cup. And you need to drink it to the dregs. You need to drink all of it. Because that's the way that we're going to save the world. And Jesus learned obedience. 
Because right here, as he struggles with this, as he struggles with his feelings, as he struggles with these emotions, as he prays these things, as he's saying, Father, listen, listen to me. Father impresses him. He hears God speaking to him. He knows what God's will is, and he submits himself to God, and he learns obedience. That is prayer. That is powerful prayer. That is the kind of relationship where there is talk and there is listening that is going on. And once that the prayer comes to an end, Jesus stands up. And he's going to go through all this misery and all this suffering still. But he is strong in the strength of his Father. He is at peace because that he knows that he is living according to his Father's will. Folks, I believe that God will speak to us. God will give us the answers that we are looking for in prayer. God will guide our minds and our hearts if we will only listen. Open our ears. Unplug our ears and listen what it is that God wants to say to us. In your prayers, give your praises to God. Give your confessions to God. But then listen. Listen to Him. Listen to what he is trying to say to you in your life. And many times you'll be surprised because it will be totally different than what you thought he would say. God will speak to you. And he will tell you what you should do. Years ago, I had an opportunity of being a student missionary overseas. I grew up in the Midwest, kind of a rural guy, kind of liked it that way. I had a chance to go over and serve one year in Hong Kong, one of the most crowded Asian cities in the world, up against the mountains, raised right up out of the, from off the bay, and the city is built up there against those mountains, and everything in Hong Kong is crowded. There are people everywhere. And more people coming into the city every day. And there I was in that very, very crowded city. So on Sabbath, I had a chance to get away. I had a chance to uh, go out to uh, a place called Clearwater Bay. That was the place I liked to go and walk on the beach. Or there was another place called Lantau Island that used to go out there and there were trails across that island out in the woods. And I used to get away from all the sounds of the city and all the crowd of the people pushing. One time I came over, over, the, over the top of the island and I looked across and I saw the city and I saw the skyscrapers and, and I, I, I saw in my mind all those people that were there in Hong Kong. And I thought how nice it was to just be in the quiet. God offers you the invitation to enter the quiet every day. Come away from all the problems and all the distresses and all the things in your life. Come to God in prayer. Pray to Him. But listen to His voice. When you put away the sounds of everything around you, you can better listen to what it is that God has to say. Amen. Amen. A little boy in a place that he hadn't been for long. Maybe not sleeping through the night real well yet. One night he hears his name called runs to the only adult that's there says what did you want the man says i didn't call you go back to sleep it happens three times and finally greasy eli says if you hear the voice here are some words to say 
And as the boy lays in his bed, he hears the call again and answers with these simple words. Speak, Lord, for thy servant here. Are you listening for the voice of Jesus? I pray that we will discover the voice of God as we spend time with Him in prayer every day. God bless. Our Father in Heaven, we thank You for these reminders from Your Word about listening to Your voice to us. Father, I pray that our prayer life will be more than our own words. I pray, Father, that you, we will hear your words speaking to us. And Father, when sometimes in our mind or in our mouth that we are actually shutting off communication with you, I pray, Father, I want to give you permission today to, to grab us from the, the back of our shirts and pull us down and say, listen. May we listen, Father, to your words to us. May we submit ourselves and follow you in all things. Bless us now as we go our way this Sabbath. May your spirit go with us in Jesus' name. Amen.